Hello everybody, I am Remy Kylis, and today I'm going to talk to you about multiracial white supremacy because I mean it is just like a fun silly topic to talk about kind of like what happened with Zena Bash. Now Zena Bash is a Mexican on her mother's side and a Jew Jewish on her father's side. She was born in Mexico. Her grandparents were Holocaust survivors. We, of course, have nothing to do with hate groups. And it's kind of like, do you want to know why Zena Bash was called a white supremacist? Because when she was resting her arms, you know, um, it made an okay symbol, you know, because she was resting her arms in a weird way. Multi-racial white supremacy. And I'm, I was like talking to the ranting feminist um, yesterday. And the ranting feminist did bring up like a good point. She says, I wouldn't call to you guys, me and your boy Pat's that's a white supremacist. But given that Tara McCarthy is part Indian, part Jew, James Offsup is part Asian, Raven Ruin is half Egyptian, and Brittany Vinci is parts black. I can see why people get confused. Weirdly enough, POC white supremacists are a thing. And of course, like these people are part of the alt right and they um, want a white ethno state. And even though uh, James F7 and Raven Ruin are, you know, parts, you know, parts non white. You know, um, they are still, you know, part of the alt right. So I could see her point there. Like, it does make sense to me. But then you have, like, the Xena Bash situation or the situation with Candace Owens. Kind of like where Candace Owens was called a white supremacist because, um, because she um, she was talking about Jim Crow and how black people were doing financially better under Jim Crow. Now, she was talking about um, finances and economy. She was saying that black people were doing financially better under Jim Crow. She wasn't actually justifying Jim Crow. But people are, were uh, on the left so they're like, see, white supremacist. And I do think multiracial white supremacists would ultimately, you know, backfire on the left. For starters, you know, multiracial white supremacy, um, it's downplaced white supremacy because it makes it sound like black people being invited is commonplace. You know, it makes it sound like it's very, very common. Like, you know, white supremacists have all of these Mexicans and all of these Jews and all of these black people who are part of their group. And to me, it downplays it. And it makes it sound like it's not all that bad. Like, it makes it sound like, oh, well, I mean, if all of these... um you know, none of white people are parts of it, then what's wrong with it? You know, it's like, what's wrong with it? So um, that's what I think is going to happen because it's kind of like it's a confusing way to talk. It's a strange way to talk. Multiracial white supremacy because the points of white supremacy is that it's exclusive. It's whites only. It's no um, black people allowed. So you're doing a disservice to non-white people. Like you are downplaying, you are downplaying the alt rights because you're making the alt rights sound diverse and inclusive. And people will start to think, well, if the alt rights is diverse and inclusive, what's wrong with it? And I would imagine that you would have a hard time explaining what's wrong with an alt rights group if they have all of these black people, Jewish people, Mexicans, and it, I mean, every, I mean, because that's the thing that people were fighting against, you know, like exclusion, where people, you know, are like, 
no black slout, no Asian slout, no Mexican slout. But it's kind of like if you're saying that the alt rights or white nationalists are diverse and they're so open minded. I mean, the weird thing is progressives are painting a positive picture of the alt rights. The progressives make the alt rights look like a good thing instead of a bad thing because people will start to question what are they even fighting against. You know, if like all of, if so many black people want to join, if so many Mexicans want to join, then it's kind of a lot like, what's wrong with this? You're actually helping the alt rights by giving them a good image. You're making them seem diverse and inclusive when they want to white ethno state. How are they diverse and inclusive? Multiracial white supremacy. You're just hurting, um, you're making white supremacy sound like it's a good thing. And that that's the weirdest part. It's kind of like the weirdest part is, is that it seems like white supremacy is being inadvertently promoted by the left. It seems like it they, they, they get so emotionally so emotional that they unintentionally help the alt rights by unintentionally giving them a good image. And I just I just think that you know willy nilly calling black people white supremacists is just gonna backfire. And you know, sure, you know, um the ranting feminists did bring up, you know, good um points like bringing up James Alsop and Braving Ruin. But the thing is, they are whites passing. You know, like Brave and Ruin, he looks like a white guy. You wouldn't know that he's half Egyptian unless he told you. With James Alsop, he looks like a white guy. Nobody would believe that he's part Asian. You know, so this, you know, like idea like, oh, you're going to be excluded when really it's... It's hard to look at them and tell anyway. And I think that's part of the problem because um, Brave and Corona said that he used to be a progressive. And it's kind of like if he was in the classroom, people would call on him last because he appears to be a white man. He's, you know, like if teachers were taking questions, they'd be like, well, you're last because you're a white man. When really, it's kind of like because these people are whites passing, they get treated as sinister, evil white men by progressives. So they join the alt-right because they believe that they'll be treated better because they're treated like white people anyway. Because nobody could look at them and readily tell that they um, are part something else. And also, I mean... When you say, you know, multiracial white supremacy, again, it makes it sound like it makes it sound like the alt rights is very welcoming of black people and very welcoming of, you know, um, Mexicans. And it, it, it paints a picture that is commonplace, that is normal for black people to be white supremacists. You are normalizing the idea that it's common for black people to be white supremacists. So I do believe that it's going to backfire because what would happen is that more and more black people would be alienated from the left. Like people who are probably in the center, like center left, center right, they would probably become alienated from the left and they'll probably get tired of being called white supremacists. And it's like, I'm a white supremacist. I'm black. Do you see the color of my skin? How could I possibly be a white supremacist? And, you know, the progressives, they tend to double down. Instead of going, this person is shocked and offended, maybe there's a confusion there. Like, maybe if this person is shocked, surprised, and is confused and bewildered, maybe I got something wrong. Progressives tend to double down. They don't think maybe I was wrong for calling you a white supremacist. It's like, nope, you're a black white supremacist. Nope, nope, nope. Because it's kind of like you said something and Candace Owens said the exact same thing. Therefore, you're a black white supremacist. 
So I just think it's something that's going to backfire on the left. And it's also why I don't really talk about the left all that often. The reason why I don't talk about the left all that often and choose not to talk about the left is because they, they, they're they eating their own. Like half of progressives got called anti-Semitic. I have seen like half of the progressive community just get called anti-Semitic. So, you know, when it comes to the left, they are going to self-destruct. So I don't really see a point to talking about them all that much because they are doing a good job self-destructing. And you know what? Never interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. If somebody's making a mistake, you just get some popcorn, you watch, and you just go about your days. Like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to let you self-destruct. Anyway, this has been Remy Kylis. I make videos every Thursday, so I'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.